All right, guys, Baz here, Welder Faber. Today, we're at Baycup Quarry, and we've got a Chieftain Power Screen 2200 that we're gonna do a bit of maintenance on. This is a weekend, it's not a live site, so we're not wearing our hats. I've got a couple of lads with me, and what we're gonna be doing today, we're gonna to be changing this damaged catch belt, collection belt, tail belt, whatever you wanna call it. It's a 1200 mil wide belt that's got a few damaged holes in it and it's tired. We've got some rollers to change. You can see these rollers have gone flat. There might be some more rollers once we get the belt off. Come and have a look at this bit of damaged part here that we've had to patch up. Yeah, so it started to pull the clips out. So now, as it's a weekend, it's the best time to change the belt. Yeah, so the first thing we're going to do is release the tail drum. So we'll pull this tail drum back in. And that bearing actually does look a little bit tired. So to release this tail drum, it is a 36 mil head bolt. Wind that back and that pulls the tail drum back and that releases the belt. We'll cut the belt, we'll fire the head drum up and we'll pull the belt off by hand with it using a rope. And also we're going to replace all the skirts, so we'll take all these sides off and the little uh, red skirting rubber inside there is going to be replaced. I have got my main belt fitter with me today, Bob. This is his van, that is a clamp. This, get, this heats up, we're going to vulcanise the belt today. That's a 1200 mil wide belt. That'll have been cut off a big roll, that. I've got Callum with me, and I've got Paul with me. Callum, he's gonna be the next, uh, the next welder fabber, should we say, because I'm gonna teach him everything that I know. He's now been with me two years, and he's coming on leaps and bounds. There's only one way to get good lads in this game, and that's to train them properly. Bob? So you just explain to us what we're doing with this belt today, we're going to bulk it, yeah? So we'll cut it off, pull it off. Yeah, feed a rope round, you want a rope round so you can change the skirts? Yeah. And then uh, we'll winch the belt back on with the uh, rope and then vulcanise it underneath, hopefully get tensions off. Yeah. Um, we'll probably have to take a few bottom rollers off, eh? Yeah, just take one roller off here. Yeah. And a deflector plate here. And then we'll vulcanise it under here. Yeah. With the slack. Carl? Can you whip this bottom roller off? But, yeah. uh, there's also a couple of uh, there are the rollers over there. I've got a few rollers in stock. And in them boxes are some meshes that we need to change today. Right, let's get going. Right, so we're just about to cut the belt now. Yeah. What we'll do, we'll connect one belt to the other and start the head drum and pull it all round. So we're going to connect them together now. Yeah. There is there is a lot of prep work being involved in this belt before a ball actually turned up, so we'll go through that with him in a bit. Yeah. What did you do, Bob, back at workshop? Well, what it is, because it's a common machine, we've got the endless length of these, so we know the length of them. So if it's raining or anything like that, we can uh, prep it in the workshop in the dry, and then uh, just come and put it on, winch it on, and join it in the press. How long does it take to prep it? Two hours, two and a half hours, something like that. And how big's the roll that this piece has been cut off? 200 meters, well it started life as 200 meters, I think we're down to about 120 well, now. So that'll have been a massive roll, and this is what, 25 meters? This just, yeah, just short of 25 meters. 25 meters. And I've used this guy for the last 15 years. There ain't no better belt man on the, out on the road, is there Bob? I don't know, like you said. <laughs> the only thing is, no one wants to do the job. Nobody wants to do it? No. Right. So, there's no one getting trained up. Same as, same as the welders though, and fitters. Nobody wants to do it. So, well, you've got to go through 10 to get one good and put it that way. Right, 
Right, so we'll connect that together in a minute yeah. and pull it through. What are you connecting it with, Bob? Uh, just a bit of string, really. Is it? Nothing fancy. We're not that technical. With this, because it's only a short belt. Right, so this is the adjuster, <coughs> the adjuster bolt for releasing the tension, yeah, so I'm just cleaning it out. We'll just nip these 24s down a little bit, so they're 16 milli bolts. Just slack them off a touch, and then that tail drum will come back. So what we're going to do now, we'll cut a slot in that, tie, tie a rope to it, we'll fire the head drum, run the machine, if we can't pull it by hand, we'll just tie the rope to the back of the van, or a machine, whatever. we'll tie the rope to the van or a machine and pull it out. Taking all, loosening all the clamps that hold the, that hold, that hold the skirting rubber on. If you see that skirting rubber, there's nothing left of it there. That should, be, that should be a good few inches longer than that. So what's happening when the machine is running, it's spilling out all the time, spillages all the time. Do you want to run it, Bob? Yeah. So that's the easiest way to get the belt on, yeah? And under all, all the rollers and everything. So easy. All these tension have gone back. Yeah, this one has had a bolt put in it. That should be a long piece of threaded bar. That look in there. Somebody put a bolt in it. I think it was me a few years ago actually. Um, so to pull this box section out of the other box section now, we'll take that out. We'll connect a little chain block to the end of it, and back to here, and just pull it back out. So that'll pull the tail, the, head, uh, the tail drum out. We 
we'll have a couple of rollers to change. Them top rollers. We'll have a couple of 45 degree rollers to change there. But we can change them where the belt splits here. So when we lower it down after, we can lift that up and get to them easy enough. His finger, lad. Really? <laughs> Come on. Hey, struggler. Milwaukee. Makita, should I say? You oh, can pull that back there now. Put that onto the cap. So I've got the shame lock on now, we're going to pull the tail drum back. You see it coming back the drum. Come on, baby! Is that side gone back as well? Right up there now. Are you happy there? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, enough yeah. that, yeah, done. I'll do. Set the chain block off now. Yeah, I'll see if you've got some 30 bar it, man. Yeah. And we'll uh, we'll change that adjuster. bolt that was used as an adjuster. I'm going to try and put it back to a longer thready bar. Up, up, up. No, no. Nice. See how he's got some pulls on the on the belt now. Are you going to lower it down onto some uh, Yeah, I'll get pallet? it joined while it's in mid-flight now. Save up bending. And then just lower it onto the press. So all this prep works, we've done it workshop. And what have you actually done there, Bobbin Workshop? Uh, it's a three ply belt, so you go down in steps. Rubber, two ply, rubber, one ply. And then uh, it's got uncured rubber in the middle of it. And solution as well on it. And then when you put in the press, it just bakes it all up. So this is the press here. That we'll have out in a minute. And what temperatures did it go up to that, Bob? 160. 160. 160 degrees. 160 degrees, see. You've had that a few years now, haven't you? Uh, 98's on it, I think, 1998. 1998. It's nearly paid for itself. Get out! <laughs> it's nearly paid for itself. Now, you know what I mean? It'll have paid for it back time and pack in. It'll have paid for itself. Yeah. That'll stick to that. Yeah. In the press. And it'll join up nicely. So what's that that you're using there, Bob? It's just a uh, rubber solution. I call it Z64, but it used to be called, but people call it just brush, brushing solution now. Brushing solution. That just helps stick it together, does it? Yeah. And there's Paul. Got a little bit of a soul come because I've just asked him to stop singing. Not allowed to sing. Not allowed to laugh. Oh, I, I, suppose, I suppose you can sing, really. 
not too much. Now. It's not too much. You've had it now, you can buy dinner instead. Oh, you're buying McDonald's oh, something. Oh, oh, oh. You can sing as long as it's kept clean, that's all I say. Oh, Cal can take us to the pub like he did last time. I reckon Cal's missus should buy you some butties and bring them down so you Cal, that you, you can take us to the pub after this job, boy. And it's on you. To join us. Must be joking. Are you joking? You're up most money, boy. I've heard you've had a big pair of eyes, Cal. Yeah, I've heard you've had a big pair of eyes too. Oh, I must be the only one, mate. <laughs> well, there's only one man on the on the big money, and that's this man here. Director. That's this man. In the grey van. <laughs> He's on the big money today, aren't you, Bob? I wish we were. This is a price job, this. <laughs> so as you can see around the other side, it just had a bolt in for the tensioner, yeah? So we've just got a bit of 20 mil bar here, really. It should be 22 or 24, that. 24. 24 mil bar, but we ain't got any, so 20 mil will do. So if we take that nut off, and just weld the nut to the end just to make a big bolt basically and uh, and then we'll use that for the tension on the other side so cal put a normal nut in that yeah and put a little bit of weld around top yeah yes, we'll just glue that together there and that is pretty pretty damn sticky stuff I'm just going to get it all uh, levelled up and everything. Just giving it a bit of a stick now, it is. I'll speed it up. Right, so this is the skirting rubber we're using, this red 40 Shaw, yeah? So that is the hardness of the rubber. And you get black skirting rubber that's a little bit harder. That, I think that's 60 Shaw, 60 Shaw, 60 Shaw, Shaw the, that, yeah. the black rubber. So that's the actual length that we need there now. So we need two of them that length to go back inside there on top of the belt. So, for those viewers that don't know, Callum, my boy, well, that's cool. he's having a baby. So I've had him some little baby grows made. Pretty cool them, aren't they? Well, the Faber, Fox Group, and soon to be daddy. Oh, not long now. Soon to be daddy. What do you think of them, boy? <laughs> Nice one. What do you think Mrs. is going to say? I think she'll like her, mate. It's making me broody. It's making me broody. I'm too old to have another kid. That's making me broody. Wait, come on. Maybe a bit too small for that yet, Bob. <laughs> no, she, we, went to, we went to midwife yesterday. Get, take we? that for Brandon. <laughs> yeah, but he's here to flap away. Yeah, 
Say my boss. Yeah, yeah, happy there. Oh, I'm happy. It's not my stuff. It's not your job, Bob. No, that's Make it up as you go. That'll do. It's not very sticky. No, the, the... Oh, is that just for the press? It's just for the press. Just right, I get you. I get you, so it's not right. You don't need... Slacken the belt. Right. Now we can get the press in it. Just go it more. I'll turn the maker down a bit, Bob. Tell me when, Bob. Yeah, that'll do. Yeah, you can't lose a good Once this press is on, it will be on for a, a good hour. Whilst it heats the belt up and sticks it together. Bob, what are we saying, an hour? Yeah, maybe about an hour. Give you next time. Yeah, Cal, I'll Yeah, you have to do that, Cal. Hey you. Right, well, Right, so as you can see, the press is on now. That will heat up to 160 degrees, see? And we'll leave that for one hour. That's vulcanised. So, the boys will start putting the skirts in now. that will go underneath these clamps. We have a couple of rollers to fit, but we can only fit them when we drop the conveyor down. There is a couple of meshes to change as well, which are in these boxes here. Stainless steel piano meshes. 
but whilst we've got a few minutes, I think we'll just answer a couple of questions. I mean, I don't normally answer questions in episodes, but on the last chapter of the Chronicles, I never answered any questions. So, director, I'll answer a few questions. Right, so let's just have a look through a few comments from a rec from the recent videos. Eh? Right, who's this here now? Bad eyes. Right, Greg Minkoff, 6733. <laughs> well, mate, not only did you take the long way, but you took the wrong way around the barn. Much easier way to get the bolts out with a MIG welder, evidently, you don't have enough experience to know how to extract a broken bolt. Hmm. Well, I did use a big welder. But do you know what? I'm not even going to get into that, right? You guys tell tell me what you think about this mon. Yeah? That answers that one. Right, next comment. Shalom, brother, if that's how you say it. Um, and there's me thinking you know everything there is to know. Nobody knows everything there is to know. Right? Everybody learns from everybody else. No matter who you are, you're always learning. All, way, all the way through life, you're always learning. And I only surround myself with positive people. Yeah? I don't have any negative people in my life. If any negative people come towards me or I feel negative energy from anybody, I get away from them and get them out of my life. And that's including people I work with, yeah? So if anybody comes into my shop negatively, they're out. Right, Randy Travis, 3998. Well, this is the episode that's come out this morning. Big trouble in Little Bake Up, and we're actually at Bake Up now. So what a Saturday morning, time for a bit of Welder Fabber video. Top man, cheers for watching. Next question. Next comment. Paul Moxon, 8839. Morning, Baz. Hope you're good. I hope you have a good day too, pal. Uh, another comment. Madman Marine. Well, this one's talking about the mold board we did. Right, so, can I ask, is there a particular reason you don't use a plasma cutter on a track rig? Maybe it's different where I am, but oxyacetylene is expensive and ERT is free. Lol. So I always find it much cheaper to use the plasma cutter rather than the torch. Well, I use oxypropane, I don't use acetylene, I never use acetylene. Um, I don't have a track for the plasma um, and the gas cutter on the track is perfect so there's no point in me changing it all but you know what I mean, I don't, need a, I don't need a track for the plasma. We don't do that much track cutting anyway. Right. Isle of Man Trucker MRB Great team of people in the workshop, excellent Enjoyable to watch start to finish And that's the voiceover Video he's talking about So, cheers for that But not many people agree with the voiceover So we're going to try and stay away from voiceovers But uh, you never know, now here we might just put a little bit of voiceover in Through the episodes Right, bit of a long one here I'm not, I'm not one for reading His eyes aren't that good at the minute um, right, Alswick, 0011 Baz, this is the bollocks mate I got to be honest, I'm addicted to your, to your content I work in the Midlands on heavy plant up to 25 tonne excavators and associated plant The experience you possess is so valuable to the likes of me and all the younger apprentices and fitters coming through the system Keep it coming mate, this is the 6th episode I've watched not in the run order I see you as a plant guru Keep the chronicles of welder fabricators coming. I'm 45 and still learning. I'm 46, pal, and I'm still learning. And cheers for watching. Director, that's enough. Let's go. All right, guys. So I just want you to take a minute to check out our sponsor, Autobolt. Yeah? If you're in the industry of running a business, garage, manager, selling parts, buying parts, you need to check these guys out, yeah? Their, their system is absolutely brilliant, yeah? And I wouldn't let anybody sponsor me unless it's 100 percent yeah i've got sponsors coming at me left right and center but it's me it's my time to pick and choose who i use these guys are brilliant check them out right so i'm just going to go get some butties for the lads but i have just noticed something on this 
DX210. Alan, what can you see that's wrong with this? From a visual inspection, what can you see? Director. Now we've got a flat top roller. Now if you remember, when we were looking at the ZX350, I was telling the lads they need to start digging the track frames off. Right? And when they don't dig the track frames off, this is what this is what happens. Right? So let's just check the other side. Oh wow. So now we've got two flat top rollers, yeah? That slowly wear in the chain. So somebody is about to get double barrels on the phone. So you better switch off of your director. So this is Bay Cup where we're working today. And this is where they film the TV series called Brassic. Do you know with Michelle Keegan? Yeah. So it is quite a bit of a famous little town, if you will. And when you're in makeup, we always go to Manning's, which is a proper good little butter shop. Proper shop. So what we say, what we say now, Bob, just pull that bit of tape off. Don't leave it on that, just trim it, trim the joints up and just, you're ready. Just trim it up and that's it, is it? Let it get down to room temperature. You can drop the conveyor back down here now. Yeah, put a bit of tension on and that. And then we'll put some tension on the tail drum. Cal, is that bar back in? Yeah. A few rollers, we've got the roller. We've got the new uh, tensioner bar back in there. Could have done with a washer on that really. Cal, yeah. get a washer on that there. Once it's tension back up, tighten the bearing back down. The seal on the outside of that bearing has come off, and that does happen. We put in too much grease into the bearing. So we'll have to keep an eye on this bearing. That's where we grease all four bearings on this conveyor. This Chieftain 2200 is uh, a very good screener. You only really get problems on the live end. That is the live end. The only problems you do get on a live end is cross members cracking. I have had them before in the past, not on the power screens, but on other screeners, where the live end just splits in half. There's a J45 crusher at the back there, feeding the little 750. That is another live head. And off that conveyor, comes into this live head. We'll get the free inch material coming off here. So we'll have 45 mil meshes in this live head. Everything that drops through the 45, goes up the conveyor into two screen boxes. Out of the, out of the front conveyor, we'll get the fines. We'll have 10 mil coming off that conveyor, 40 mil coming off that conveyor, 20 mil coming off that conveyor. Are we ready for lowering it, Bob? Hold it down, aye. Go on then. Now we can tension the 
tail drop. So we'll keep this old belt. We'll use that for patching other belts and use it for skirting rubber on other machines. Spare rollers that we've got in the cabin. A couple of spare drive belts. And there are two meshes that we're going to bang in shortly. So that conveyor there, that is an auxiliary conveyor. So that is an extra that we added onto the machine when we bought it. Also, there's another little conveyor here that feeds it. tension on that tail drum there we'll get the sag out of that belt Not too bad. Well, if you're too tight, you'll struggle getting your rollers back in. Oh, yeah. So, here, go now, that way. That's pretty, it's pretty tight, that. Just... Right, so now we've got it back in position. We've got the tail drum pulled back a little bit. We've just got to put this return roller back on. Let me drop it down a bit. Are you alright there? I'll be alright there. Just got a couple of new U bolts. The old U bolts were seized. Put yours in first, Bob. Either yeah. way. Yeah. Just put one side in first, and then we can slip the roller in. Keep it away. Right, so we're going to run the belt now and track it up. Just close doors, is on, doors on the vans, yeah, so it dust up with vans. Put your windows up. So to run this belt, you have to fire the screen box. And the belt. The belt won't run without the screen box is running. So we need to get that belt in the centre of the drum. So we look at the gap there for the belt and the same, it needs to be the same on the other side. Also it needs to be the same on the head drum. Right, so now that we've got the belt running central on, on both tail drum and head drum, we'll tighten the bearing back up. The M16 milli bolts, we'll just tighten them nuts up, tighten the bearing back down to the frame, we'll put that guard back on, and then we'll change the two 
top rollers, which are 45 degree rollers. Right, so we've got two top rollers to change. These are the stock rollers that I have up at top. So if you're ever unsure what angle they are, they run at, they run at different angles, these rollers, yeah? So that's a 30 degree roller, and that's a 45 degree roller. Can you see the difference in angle? Yeah? And the way of looking to see, they will have a number on it. There, can you see that? 45 and 30. They're drive belts for one of the screen boxes. It's three per screen box, but they're okay. We don't need to change them today. They would keep them as spurs. So that's just took two and a half hours to do the full belt and skirts. Now we're going to change them rollers and we're going to change a couple of messages inside the screen box. So what we're doing now, we're just lowering the belt all the way to the floor. As you can see, we split it, which has made the belt come loose. So that will allow us to get to them rollers easier. We'll go down a bit more or not? Yeah, it can do. Take it all the way to the floor. Well, you're, you're doing. Yep. Yeah. that. I was just looking then to see if it had worn this this part of the frame down but it's actually all right that is where it's not welded there that's not supposed to be welded a stitch welded on that plate so what happens when if you don't change these rollers i mean we're a bit too far gone anyway but if we'd have, if we'd have left that it'd have just worn through that steel plate Right, so that's Bob, bit of the job done, so he's going to shoot now, and these two are going to bang some meshes in. I was going to shake you yeah. out, Bob, till I seen you no, put no. that stuff on. I'll see you next job. I'll see you next time, alright, mate? That's all right, Bob. Right, so these are the stainless steel piano mesh, 7 mil. that means we've got a 7 mil gap there. And now they're locking, you just open them up, you see how it's going to open up the mesh. It locks into a flat bar, so it'll lock into a flat bar on one side, and the opposite side you've got a banana bar that's shaped like that. Yeah, so always make sure it goes in that way, and then you have all the two bolts there, two bolts there, pull it back and lock it in so basically that banana bar pretty much goes straight yeah and to know when they've got the right tension on you just rub your hand across them like that you don't want to feel any of them loose so i'll show you now once they're fitted so these are the old meshes that are out see how they're damaged So what that is allowing, that is allowing the 10 mil stone that's landing on there to go into the dust pile. And, and same as you go up and up, you know, if a mesh is damaged above, it'll let bigger material through into your product, and then that product isn't right for sale.
So these are the banana bars I was talking about that lock the screen in. Yeah, so can you see how one's going that way and one's going that way? So there is, it has to go in a certain way. So the mesh locks onto that side and that side. Yeah, and when you pull it tight on this side and this side, yeah, it kind of pulls the bar straight to tension the mesh. So we're just tightening the bars now, the flat bars that we just mentioned. And as you're tightening them, keep it so the bolts are going in evenly. So can you see? That wants to be even, and it wants to be even with the slot hole. Yeah. Milwaukee gun. Or Makita gun. You boys make your own mind up. So now I'll go inside. That's both sides. That's both sides tightened up now, both meshes, should I say. As you can see, the mesh is in place now. These little white plastic hook things, they clip over the, the angle iron. Yeah, so they have to clip on the angle iron then. One's all right. Carl? Yeah. This one needs a little bit more at this side. Here. Yeah. This one. You see how it's a little loose there? Yeah, this, these bolts. Yeah. Right. Is that gun, is that, which gun are you on there? Yeah, has he got enough punch in it? Hello. Yeah, happy? Yeah, that'll be right now. Both That'll be okay now. Just wondering where that big lump's come from down there. Have you seen that? Are you looking? It's a big lump here. Oh. I'll run that off. Right, we'll lift it back up now, yeah? yeah. And make sure all the rubbers go back in the right spot. You with me? Yeah. Oh. All good. Right, so we're nearly there now. All the skirts back in the right spot, but I've just noticed this belt here. So it tracks all the way to this side. It's starting to wear the metal away, do you see? So we'll have to put a little bit of tension on that tail drum, send it out, send the belt over that way a little bit. Play the belt up. So that's it for this episode. Um, this isn't a chronicle, this is an episode. If people are getting a bit confused, if you're new to the channel, I do do episodes just on specific jobs like this. This was a job of changing a belt and a couple of messages on a certain machine. Whereas the chronicles are my vlog. Yeah, so that's my day-to-day -day stuff. Um, so yeah, if you are new to the channel, please check out some of my other videos. Please like and subscribe. It does help the algorithm. We are noticing a, a growth in the channel at the moment. So if you are liking it, drop us a few comments. I do read every comment, by the way, and I will get back to you. Cheers.